the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Very well, welcome to our Eucharist on this Monday, Thursday. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. As the Lord welcomes us into his presence in word and sacrament, let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to give praise to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. have invited us to share in the supper which your son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit to hear God's word. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. 
It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? 
Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I have said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. speak, and may we all hear in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, on our journey through Holy Week 2022, we've reached one of the most momentous nights in our Christian calendar. A momentous night both for the first disciples and for all of Jesus' followers down the ages since then. On that first night, three years had passed since Jesus had first called those 12 special companions to journey with him. Three years of intense joys, sorrows, miracles, amazing teaching, wonderful close companionship and scary clashes with the authorities. They'd now reached Jerusalem on their annual pilgrimage with thousands of others to celebrate Passover. They were already afraid of what trouble might be in store because these clashes had been heating up more and more since they'd arrived and Thomas had already declared that he was ready to die with Jesus when Jesus had been determined to press ahead to Jerusalem in spite of warnings of danger. Later that very evening, Peter was to declare his undying loyalty, only to be told that in spite of his good intentions, he would soon be in total denial, saying he never knew Jesus. But they could have had no idea that by the very next evening, Jesus would have gone through agony 
death and burial. No idea that one of them, Judas, would have committed betrayal, followed by suicide. And no idea that all of them would have run away in Jesus' hour of greatest need and left him to face arrest and a trumped-up capital charge without support. And they had absolutely no inkling either that this dreadful tomorrow would not be the end of all their hopes and dreams. On this special night for us here, over 2,000 years later, our Gospel reading invites us to enter once again in our hearts and our minds into that upper room with Jesus and the Twelve. Invites us into that intimate space full of pent-up emotion. As they gather, imagine them looking around to see who will perform the task of the lowliest servant, washing the feet of the guests. Jesus has clearly masterminded this supper, but he has clearly not organised a slave to wait on them as they might have hoped. So it will be up to one of them to do it. As they're wondering, hesitating, should I, will he, feel with them their sudden shock, their shame and their guilt as Jesus himself, their revered and beloved teacher, prepares to take on that lowliest and least pleasant role. See him in your mind's eye, removing his outer garment, tying a towel around his waist and pouring water into a basin. See him going to them one by one, kneeling down, gently taking each foot into his hands, feet, leathery, calloused, dirty and smelly from walking the dusty roads for many miles in open sandals. Just see him tenderly washing and drying each foot. The Lord has become the servant, the slave, a total role reversal. And now listen as he quietly explains the deep significance of what he has done for them. Hear him say to you and to me that he has set an example for us to follow. Hear Jesus explain that we are to do as he has done, to love and to serve one another as he has loved and served. There should be no room for status-seeking in the company of those who would follow Christ, no room for jockeying for position or job. A conversation I once overheard between a captain of industry and a bishop went like this. A real conversation this was. The first one said, one of the perks of being in authority is no longer having to help stack the chairs. And the other one said, the more authority you have in the church, the more important it is to be always ready to help to stack the chairs. At a minister's conference I once attended, an overnighter, the bishops met us on arrival and carried our luggage up to our rooms for us. That was very surprising and very humbling too. This is the meaning of our name for this day, Maundy Thursday, the day of the great mandatum, the commandment, the mandatum from which we get the words Maundy and mandate, the great commandment to love one another with that humble, all-embracing, self-sacrificing love. What will that mean for us as we go about our daily lives? It will be different for each one of us at different stages in our lives and in different circumstances. Often it will be about serving others. But sometimes, especially when we become sick or infirm, it will be about allowing others to serve us. Sometimes, quite literally, to allow them to wash us and to remain gracious as we submit. And I, for one, wouldn't find that easy. I'm not looking forward to it. But it's all part of the great commandment to serve and also to submit to being served. Like all of those disciples at the start of the evening, we might be looking around for other people to do the dirty work. Or like Peter, our pride might get in the way of allowing ourselves to receive. Tonight gives us a fresh opportunity to ponder and to pray about our attitude to all of these things as we symbolically reenact the foot washing, this startling symbolic action of Jesus. 
Tonight, of course, is also the night of that other great commandment, to do this in remembrance of me, a commandment which we shall be privileged to obey once again as we come to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. And we're also invited, but only if we're able, to keep watch for a while afterwards as we remember how Jesus asked his closest disciples to keep watch with him through the coming night. To keep watch as we remember how Jesus sweated blood in agonized prayer at the thought of the horrors to come and to remember how in his hour of greatest need they let him down and fell asleep. We too are frail like them. We too may be weary, we too may let him down, but like them we can ask and know his complete forgiveness as they did later. We can be restored and reinstated as they were later, as his beloved disciples, and we can be given back our commission to spread the good news of his love. And as we come tomorrow to the desolation of the crucifixion, thankfully we already carry in our hearts and our minds the great consolation and anticipation of the joyful resurrection soon to come. So let's end by bowing our heads in a moment of silent prayer together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Come now to reenacting Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Would those who have indicated that they are happy to have their feet washed please come and take seats here at the front whilst the choir sing for us.
Have a spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, on this most holy night, when your Son was betrayed, betrayed, he washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. We pray that following his example, nothing may be below us in striving for the values of your kingdom. We pray that your church may have a humble and honest heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. Hear. On this most holy night, your son prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church for a healing of our divisions. Pray that there may be one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. We pray your blessing especially, dear Lord, on our all-age stations at the cross tomorrow morning and the Churches Together service in the Market Square. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. 
on this most holy night. Your son prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples and their message. We pray for the mission of your church, that we may be confident in the good news, that our joy may be so infectious that it draws all people to you. We thank you, Father, for the time we have spent studying together the joy of the gospel this Lent. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear hear us. us. On this most holy night, Jesus commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for all who are rejected and unloved this night. Pray for those living in, with broken relationships, for those who face abuse, Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. On this most holy night, Jesus reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray especially for the church in the Holy Land. For the church in our communities where it is belittled. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. On this most holy night, Jesus accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. We remember those who taught us how to love and taught us the faith. Remember those who have died recently, among them for the souls of Trevor Waterton, Jean Stevens, Ian Williams. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this most holy night, we come before the altar to receive our Lord's body and to be fed in our discipleship. We come before him now just as we are and offer to him those thoughts, those desires, those longings those joys which are in our hearts this night. Confident that we do not pray alone, but in communion with all the saints and martyrs. We make these our prayers to our Heavenly Father, saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for the peace. Jesus says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us wave to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
during the administration of communion, I will come to this step, and if you'd like to come out, as is your normal fashion to come and receive communion, standing here at the front, and then go back to your places. We sing our offertory hymn, O Thou Who at Thy Eucharist Didst Pray. <laughs>